Can you hear it loud and clear? Oh no Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to GM32, the hockey podcast. I'm Vito Scaringi. I'm Carson Johnstone. I'm real excited tonight. We got two guests. One's a co-co-host, Joey Bricks. Some of you may know him, 97.7 Hits FM. How are you, Joey? I'm fantastic. Thanks for having me, fellas. This is great. Oh, thanks for being on, Joey. You know what I mean? It's a great. Uh, it's going to be a great time tonight. We have uh, we have our buddy, that Carl Greco, coming on tonight. Yeah. Carl, it's going to be a great show, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. We're excited, honestly. We got Bricks in the house. Carl on Zoom. We're ready to go. Yeah, it's going to be a great one tonight. I'm excited. Hope you guys are. Hope you guys have been listening, following, you know, Spotify, YouTube. That's have a great one, guys. Enjoy. That's, Tori didn't say a word. Just left. Just left. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, awesome guy, though. Like, didn't even didn't even know the girl, just didn't want to watch her cry. <laughs> you know? That's amazing. That. That all right, awesome. well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, if you don't know, now you know. We got my best friend coming on. I've known the kids since I was in diapers. Carl Greco, how you doing, my friend? I'm good, boys. How are you guys What's doing? What's going on, baby? Good, buddy. Good. Good to have you, you on, guys. Grex. It's been a long time. Yeah, man. Honestly, well, it's been a long time for everybody. This COVID uh, stuff, it's wild. Absolutely. But Can't wait some for all good stuff news. Too. Some good news. I hear rinks are opening up next week. Yep. Yep. Right. It'd be awesome. So that'll little, be good. A little bit of a mix-up from skating on the pond all the time, eh, Vitz? Uh, you know, all the pond's melted right now too, though, eh? Yeah, it's true. Yeah. That's I'm, true. I'm excited. No, I think I think our strides are gonna be a little bit tougher coming off, a little bit nicer coming off of those ponds. You know. You better get your skates sharpened. Gotta get them sharpened. Gotta get them yeah. sharpened. Gotta retape the stick. Yeah, exactly. Joey Bricks, how you look, doing, look buddy? Look at Greco over here. <laughs> I miss you, pal. I miss you too, buddy. <laughs> we got uh, a former Hitsman player over here. Sometimes comes on once a week. The Hitsman. Yeah, Hitsman. The Hitsman. Hitsman. Anybody know what the Hitsman is? Carl, fill us in. So uh, actually, it's one of the one of the craziest things I've I've been a part of the Hitsman. I did, I had no clue you guys were around. Um, <laughs> so the Hitsman are uh, are uh, a team uh, for ninety seven seven Hits FM, um, the radio, and every week um, you guys play a team. It's uh, all goes to charity, uh, which is awesome. Um, so you play a team uh, after the game. You have your pizza. You have whatever, but it's it's awesome. It's for a great cause, and and then Joey Bricks gets on the air and talks about the game yeah, after, which yeah, is pretty cool. Yeah, so. we got him sitting sitting right here beside us. We're we're happy to have you on, Bricks. Yeah, welcome to be third man in, Bricks. Welcome the third, third man, man in. in. I like that. That's it. That's <laughs> it. Oh, we gave you the tap tonight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Greco, welcome. Thanks welcome to be boys. the fourth man in, brother. Yeah, thank you, boys. No Appreciate problem. it. We're gonna have some good combos tonight, man. I know we got a lot to, a lot to talk about. I know me and you got a lot of good stories, brother. And like, yeah, let's kind of let's kind of dive right into it, Grex. I mean, yep. I I know I I know where you started, but I I yep. know a lot. I know Carson might not. I know a lot of our viewers, our listeners might not. So let's go. Let's go. When would you put a twig in your hand here? Funny enough to stop you right oh, before. Sorry, that, sorry, yeah. Because you say I may not know. Grex and I went to elementary school together. You went to yeah. Notre Dame, eh? Yeah. Well, you a long guys time ago. was he was he on your loaded uh, three pitch ago. team? Uh, I don't you think we're sand, you guys were that. sandbaggers, man. <laughs> you guys sandbagged St. Joe's so bad. We should have beat you guys. Yeah, oh, we had a pretty funny. good. We had a pretty good school. We had a pretty big, uh, pretty big sporting school. We, mm-hmm. um, but I, Carson, I don't know what grade did you end up leaving in. Uh, I left actually after grade four. Nah, so you okay. know what? I, I just the reason I even kind of thought of that because you said don't don't really know where he comes from. The only thing I knew about Greco back then was that he was a year younger than me and that he played yep. hockey. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Exactly. Same school, same school. Yeah, yeah. it was exactly. fun. Dude. Anyways, Grex, let's get into it, brother. When, uh, what made you pick up a Twiggy kid? Yeah, so I actually, um, I always wanted to be a goalie. Like I used to, uh, I used to write to Cujo's fan club. Actually, kind of makes younger. sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so I used to write to him all the time, and then you know, like the generic emails. And one day, I I got an email back, and uh, I was jazzed. Like I was so excited, and. Um, so my mom, like my dad, you know, like you know, like the old time guys that played hockey, they they don't like like they don't want you to be a goalie. They don't want their kid to be a goalie. <laughs> never, yeah. like, never. So, uh, so my mom got me these um, these roller ho- roller hockey pads and uh, for Christmas, and I was so excited. Like I put those things on, like I was I was pumped, and you could see my dad in the corner, like he just was not having any of it. <laughs> so, he goes, so he looks at me, he goes, "Hey, why don't we go try those things on? Like uh, I'll, I'll take some shots on you." So we went outside, and he's like. 
he's peppering some tennis balls at me, just like letting me feel it a little bit. And then all of a sudden he drops like a couple of pucks out and he just tees him off. Like he's got that. Old- <laughs> <laughs> but, but let, let, let's just let, let him fly. Let's get, let's get this right here. Let's get this right here. Big Frank's not a small guy. No, and Big Frank and let them fly. Shout out Big Frank. How you doing? Bro? Yeah, and I he, miss him. He let, let him fly. And like the first one hit me like, right in the pad and you know like those things have like no padding like and it hurt like (laughs) crazy and then he just teed some more up and after that like i put those roller hockey pads so far in the basement i didn't see him forever (laughs) never wanted to be a goalie goalie again um but then yeah like uh since then i you know i just loved it like i love the game like you you guys know like as soon as you pick up the, the stick and you start you start skating and you start you know seeing you're becoming like pretty good at the sport it's like it's awesome and and then i just stuck with it from there yeah man of course. I mean, there's always a moment too, like, um, growing up where, you know, you just have fun playing, but there is a moment too where you realize like, yeah, you know, I actually am pretty good at this. Right. And you want to stick with it and become serious. But uh, what moment do you think that was for you, Greg? Like at what point did you think like, you know, I, I think I'm going to take hockey pretty seriously and, you know, pursue something. You know, of course, like if, if you go back and look at our minor hockey team, we were so good when we were younger. Uh. Yeah, like we had like, the likes of, like maidens, right? Like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Taylor Reese, Taylor Reese. Like there was Rhymer. Like there was just like if you go up and down that roster, like we were just so good. And then, you know, things happen and people leave. And our minor hockey team, like I think when we were minor midget, we might have won like seven games. Oh wow! Eh? And like yeah, we were we were tough to watch out there. And like <laughs> you know, like credit to everyone's parents that used to keep coming out to watch us. Like we were like we were tough to watch. But I think like. <laughs> I, I think we all kind of still took it seriously. Like, I think at that point, like, I was like, I can't remember me being like, oh, like, my, you know, my parents are forcing me to be here. But <laughs> yeah. I think, like, I, you know, we, like, still loved it. But I would really say I started taking it seriously. You know, like, was the biggest wake-up call ever was not getting drafted to the OHL. Like, I think that was something to me that, and and I know everybody's been through it, either you're drafted or you're not, but, um you know, I was, I was so devastated. Like I remember like sitting at that computer all day, refreshing the feed, like, am I getting drafted? Am I not getting drafted? Right. Like, yeah. And it was so discouraging. Like, and, and again, like you'll see like a lot of kids, like that's it. Like if I don't get drafted to the OHL, like that's it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, I, and, and uh, to me, like I thought at the time, like I, maybe I got a chance. I just gotten pick to move on to the under 17 like the omha final under 17 team nice and uh, i was thinking to myself maybe like maybe i have a chance and then yeah it just it didn't happen and it's just so discouraging but it either like like you go one one or two ways with it like you either you use that as motivation or you just kind of you crumble after that yeah i love i love where you're going with that correction i was in the same boat as you you know we 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 had a tough team to watch for sure but you know what man we all kind of stuck together we all had a great time out there we had some good moments and uh and we put a couple fancy wins together absolutely you know but, absolutely we uh it was a great group of guys that's what i can say like we uh, had a great group of guys like guys that you know it was fun going to the rink like sometimes you know when you're losing games and it's just it's tough going to the rink it's you need that extra motivation to go to the rink. But, like, we, it was fun. Like, even, you know, we, we bonded together. We weren't necessarily the greatest, but, you know, we bonded together and we, we tried to uh, we tried to make the best of a bad situation. But, yeah, same same kind of situation, V. It's, like, it's um, it's tough, right? Like, you, you went through it, too. Like, yeah, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of marked my own grave there. I guess you could say, but uh, uh, Carson, have you heard the story before uh, about Vito? Yeah, <laughs> I have. I've heard it. It's, uh, it's a rough one. There. I don't, uh, it's a tough one. I don't know if we're gonna put that one out there. It's, it's on the a air. learning curve. It's a learning curve. It's definitely a learning curve. It yeah. is a hundred percent a learning curve. Um, um but, but yeah. no, like, like, yeah, I guess we can kind of dive. You know what? I'll dive into a little bit. You want to talk so, about it? We'll talk cool. about it. So you know, you know, putting, put, we were playing Burlington game three of the ICTAs. I put a Hattie home and how many? Nineteen seconds. Was it 19, to score 19 it. Nineteen seconds. <laughs> and uh, and. Uh, I, I did talk to a few scouts that year, and I was I was ranked pretty up there, I believe. You know what I mean? Especially after that, you know what I mean? I was looking good. I was feeling good. I had a great year and had a couple good tilts. And then and then one of my biggest pet peeves is when coaches decide to, to, to chirp players on the ice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yep. li- listen, you're a coach. Like, chirp, like, like, coach your guys. You know what I mean? Because, like, I can't do nothing to you. Yeah. I can't I can't come on the bench and fight you. I end <laughs> yep. up opening up and, and, and taking a howitzer at the coach against uh, I think it was Hamilton. Put a little context in this though. Like it was a it was It was a two on one. It was in Hamilton. 
And he's far side. Yeah, I'm way across <laughs> the rink, and I open up red line, like not even across the red line. I open up, and I just unleash a bullet at the coach. Oh. Miss him, get tossed. Some dad comes up to me, while I says something, grabs my cage. I one punch this dad, <laughs> and then and then I don't know. My dad came down. Anyways, long story short, um, I got suspended for a little bit. And then before that game, your dad and my dad, Carl, all came in the room and told us not to do nothing stupid. And what did yeah. I do? I go out there and do yeah. something stupid. But well, you, know, you, know so- why? you know why? Because we, me, Vito, and Sammy Caranta were getting called up to play the playoffs with the older team, the older AAA team there in Major Midget. So it was our last game. We were losing pretty bad. And our dads came down and said, hey, listen, like, you know, relax out there like you guys have next mm-hmm. weekend. So don't, you know, don't. Go out there and do something crazy, and then you won't get to play. And what does Vito do? He I sat three play. games, dude. I had to sit all three games. games. I, I thank yeah. God we had that. But anyway, so I didn't get drafted. Literally after that moment, I looked up at the at uh, uh, where the where the scenic area is, yep. the, the war room in, in Hamilton above the rink, and uh, it was packed after going into that game. And then after after that incident, I didn't see one guy up there. So you know, and then a hey, long story short, let's uh, it it definitely I I uh, made my own bed and I had to sleep in it. And you know what? The and uh, I don't, I don't necessarily regret it. Something to learn from. It's it's it's. Absolutely. I don't dwell. Let's put it this way. I don't dwell on it. Yep. I I regret my decision at that time for sure. But I don't dwell yep. on it. And and you know what? It made me who I am today with, uh, through growing up and playing where I was playing. And yeah. And then look at us now. But uh, salute. But yeah. yeah. Cheers. 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 Yeah. Cheers. But, uh, but no, it, um, for sure, Carl. You know what, Veeds? You came a long way from wearing that. Like I remember, you used to wear that. Terrible, like helmet. That space listen, helmet. Listen, don't, <laughs> don't, don't you get the don't, CCM? No, it was an eye tech, dude. It was an eye tech, and it was the <laughs> roundest. Was it was the roundest fucking thing you'll ever see in your life. No, but he had the he had the nick, nickname Shake and Bake for all of minor hockey because it was that like it, it, he when he picked up the puck, anything could happen. Anything could happen. Clinton. The amount of times, the amount of times I saw him just undress defenseman, and I'd be like, oh my, Shake and Bake. Like everybody's in the bench. Hey, hey, couldn't skate backwards till I was like fourteen, though. Yeah, but had, had some of the nice, still has some of the nicest hands. Like even when we go, I, you know, we playing together, like summer hockey. When now you still got the, those nice hands. But like even back then, you just and then breakaways. Oh, uh, but the see, same move, but the goalie right? kept falling for it every time. Every time, it's because it like, we were like eight. But like it's fine. Yeah. It was a head fake, yeah. and then you went to your forehand and just tucked it let, every time. You want to get into gross gear, buddy? I still got that picture of you in that blue neck that brace you wore. Blue neck guard, I can't no, believe it. No, it wasn't a neck guard, dude. It was a neck brace. You couldn't bend your head. Yeah. Carl, you got great stories. No, no. Well, you and I, we got, have to get to our uh, story eventually at some point. No, let's, let's jump into it right now, Brex. What do you got for me here? Uh, let's let's no. find it Carl, you know what I'm doing. It's a great story. It's, it's funny. I like It's great. I've, I said it on the radio before, probably. But uh, we, I got to get into the story between me and you, Greco. Yeah. You guys all know what bucket boxing is, right? Oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we, yeah. we would, uh, I think it was you, Vito. You you used to have these hours all the time. And uh, we, we just go out there and skate, play some shinny. And uh, it was at Stanford Arena with, with uh, Rink 5. No. No, sorry, right, not Rink 5. Room, uh, five. room 5. And uh, it was a Room 5, right? Room 5. That good, really long, big room. And we'd go back there, and we'd fucking bucket box. <laughs> and uh, you and I were squaring off. We would always fight each other. But, what, but this one particular time, I just came swinging. No protection, nothing. I didn't care whatsoever. Just swinging, head down. And uh, Carl got a few shots in me before in that fight, so I think he broke my chin strap. So my um, mask was already down as I'm swinging at Carl, and he just finds that opening. Bang! Uppercuts me, <laughs> and the uh, the helmet that fell down on my forehead just went right up in in between my two eyebrows and uh, cut me open. It was great. Is that the scar right there? Yeah, yeah, right wow. here. From Carl, just uppercutting you right, right between the eyes. Yeah, he he caught that shot. <laughs> I was I wasn't protecting myself. I gave it myself. You know, I just oh god came in swinging. Well, that. Uh, that is definitely uh, a learning point here for sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! And I felt sick to my stomach. Like I remember, I went home, and uh, we were messaging on MSN. Oh and, yeah, we uh, were. He's, he's messaging me, telling me he's in the hospital. He's got to get a staple yeah. in between his eyebrows, and oh I was god. sick to my stomach. I don't think I slept like a wink that night. <laughs> I felt so bad, but um, no, it was good times. We were young at St. Paul High School. We we're young, having fun, and you know. Oh yeah, I don't think I'm, your dad was too happy. 
And you, he no. wasn't mad at you at all. He was just mad at me. Like, yeah. what are you fucking doing <laughs> boxing with your hockey equipment on? So he was yeah. pretty uh, mad yeah. at me for that. But he wasn't mad at you. No one was mad at you no, uh, no. at all. I, think a lot I wasn't guys, even mad. Yeah, a lot of guys learn the hard way, I think, with uh, bucket boxing and, then, and stuff and locker boxing, whatever you want to call it. It's uh, it's fun at the time, and you know everyone's done it. I think at some one point or another. But uh, I would highly you know advise against it. Everybody, it's just dangerous. Broken jaws, concussions, cuts. Joey yeah. staple in his forehead. It happens, right? But that's a funny story for sure. Um, Absolutely, course. Mm-hmm. So, Grex, I want to talk to you a little bit uh, about your junior, your junior experience, right? Because uh, we talked, you know, growing up and after the draft and that. But you know, you didn't stop playing. Um, you know, you had a good junior career, an interesting junior career. You played a few different leagues, right? So if, if I'm correct, you played in the CC, the OJ, and the GOJHL. I did, yes. Okay, so for a lot um, a lot of guys that I talk to anyway, like within my line of work, uh, you know, they talk about the differences in those leagues and like what is the exact difference, you know, how, how do you make that jump, like what, what, what kind of jump is it, what is the exact uh, – you know, how did, how did you feel in those leagues, I guess, you know, for some of the guys that may be listening, uh, what are those differences like and how was your experience in those leagues? So, yeah, I, I think I was listening to one of the first episodes you guys did in cars. You talked about going to prep school yeah, and, uh, the differences about going to prep school and that's the road I took at first too. Um, and so when I did make the jump to junior, I went to, yeah, the CCHL, I went to Pembroke Lumber Kings. Um, and yeah, at first it was like, uh, it was a big jump, right? Like, who'd you play was, for there? Yeah. Uh, Break it yeah, up. Name drop. Sheldon Keefe. Yeah. yeah. Plug, plug, plug. Big yeah. win tonight. Big win tonight. Big win tonight. Get him on the podcast. Sure. Get him on the podcast. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I don't even, I don't even think he probably has my number blocked or something by now. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, he was awesome. Like he made the transition so seamless. Right. But okay. you know, again, like going out and playing, like, we had we had such a good team, right? Because everybody wants to come play for him, right? Let's face it, like he was the best coach I've ever had, like bar none. Like just you know, just knew the game so well and could break down the game so well. So everybody wanted to come and and Pembroke is Hockey Town, Canada. So like it, awesome. everybody knows, like the Lumber Kings just had won the RBC Cup, I think, two years before. And if, for people that don't know, that's the championship of Junior A hockey, Tier Two Junior A hockey. Um, and I think he had won the league like a bunch of times in a row. So he was just like known to be a winner. And so guys like all over the, like all over the place would just come, come and play for him and so many division one commitments. So, um, you know, at first, man, I, f- I found like a, a, a hard time. Like it was a tough transition. Like you go away to play junior, like not only like I was in high school, number one. So then, and, and a lot of the people at high school didn't like the guys in the team just from bad rep from before. So that was tough. Um, living with a new family, like, like, thank God I had the best billet family ever. Like they were incredible. And, and you, you hear stories about some people that just had the worst experience, but they made, they made it so awesome for me. And then like the game, like, you know, you're still young, you're coming out of prep school hockey and some of these guys are, are men, right? Some of these 20 year olds are men. Um, and, and there would be games where I'd find myself, you know, out of the lineup and, but he was the, he was the kind of guy that he would pull me in before, like I wouldn't be playing and he explained to me why Mm -hmm. Um, and just basically like trusting the process. So um, I owe a lot of credit to him because um, to have that guy as your first like junior coach is is pretty special. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Well, that's great. Um, Vito actually just told me that tonight. I had no idea you played for him. It was funny. We were watching a Leaf game and uh, he was like, yeah, Carl, you know, Carl played for Sheldon Keefe. I was like, no, I'm asking him. That's awesome. That's incredible. Funny. Um, So after Pembroke, where'd you head? Yeah, so that year, so halfway through my first year playing there, um, he sold a team because he ended up getting the head coaching job in Sault Ste. Marie. Um, so that summer he sold the team, and I was going to go to camp in Halifax with the Mooseheads. I had gotten, like, the invite and whatnot, and um, something inside me, you know, like, playing my whole life after, and this is kind of, like, on me, like, after I didn't get drafted in the OHL, I was kind of like, you know what, like, let's let's go right for the school. Let's go, let's try and get, you know, your NCAA and um, my regret now, like looking back, I'm, I should have went to the camp. I didn't. I stayed in Pembroke under new ownership. Um, and, you know, some things just don't work out, right? Like you can't fit like a square into a, into a circle peg sometimes, right? Like yeah, man. You, you can't force it. So um, I uh, ended up getting traded to Burlington for the Cougars. So I went to play for the Cougars that my second year in junior. 
Um, and that's a whole different experience. Like, yeah. yeah. You met Tyler's our buddy like, Tyler, Tyler Lepore there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Lepore, he was a great guy. Like, great guys in the team. Again, we just, you know, we, we couldn't put it together. We were, <laughs> we were tough to watch, too. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So, quick stint there. Um, and I was enrolled in Brock at the time. So, um, when the trade deadline came around, we were getting beat so bad. And I, the Pete Richards, Vito, you remember you fought his kid Cooper. Oh, uh, my buddy Cooper. What a great, he's a good guy though, man. I had no yeah, problem. I had yeah, no issues. Is, with that, him. is that the guy you were telling yeah. me dented your cage? Literally the guy, the That's guy, I got, I learned how to take a, a cage off when I was younger and when we had a camp or something, I forget. And then we squared off in minor midget. Cause like back then, cars, you know, like, I had like, those scouts wanted those guys. You wanted to fight a little bit. They needed the oh, tough yeah. guys too, right? Yeah. So I squared off with this kid, and I ended up, I got his cage off. As soon as we dropped the gloves, this guy just unloads on my cage, Greco. Oh, yeah. you remember that? Tough. Dude, oh, he yeah. unloaded on my cage. He literally dented my cage. I had his bucket off. I'll take the win on that fight. No problem. Sorry, Coop. But uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, he literally he gave my cage a licking. Yeah, he's a, you know what? He's a tough kid, and he was on the team too in Burlington. Um, and we just, we had such a good team too. I, I didn't understand what, like Jeremy Gotsman, he was your age cars. I think he was a high pick in the O. Um, and I, I don't know what happened there, but he was with us, but, um, the team, we just weren't, we weren't good enough to make the playoffs. So, um, Pete Richards is an awesome guy, like incredible guy. He decided to do, uh, you know, a good thing. The guys that wanted to win and who were like aging out, he let him move on to, to go for a, a championship. Um, and he pulled me aside and said, you know, I want you to stay for the year. He's like, but I'm going to tell you something. He's like, it's, it's not going to get better. You know, like it's, it's going to be tough, but stick around and, you know, and then, uh, I, that was right before a game we played Toronto Lakeshore. I think we went out and we got beat like seven, one or nine, one. It was something along those lines. Uh-huh. And there was periods of time, like we didn't score a goal, I think for like four or five games. in wow. Burlington. Wow. Yeah. So, but then I was enrolled in Brock and, um, the trade deadline came around and I was like, you know, like, I don't want to be going back to the CCHL cause this is the OJ now. I'm like, I don't want to keep, you know, flipping back and forth, mm-hmm. but I'm enrolled in Brock, you know, like, and that was my parents' big thing. If you're going to, if you're going to play, you can play, but you got to stay in school. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I stayed at Brock and I ended up going down and playing with Thorold for the playoffs. Right on, man. Yeah. And, uh, so did you just play the, the playoffs that year in Thorold? I think I played about maybe like ten games before. Okay, so you finished the season. Yeah, yeah. Like I was, you know, Carson asked me that earlier, Grex, and I don't think I, I don't think as when I was with the Canucks, I got a game against you. No, no, you wouldn't have. I think I played like Caledonia like three or four times. Yeah, maybe, like, that's because like us a couple times. Yeah, Fort Erie. Yeah, that's what yeah, Carson was yeah, saying. Yeah, you guys in Fort Erie. That's right. Yeah. But um, yeah. no, yeah, that's what I was. That's what Carson was. Or that's what, yeah, he asked me, and I was like, yeah, you know what? I don't think I don't think I played against Carl. No, we would no. I I, I remember I, I was marking the calendar because I wanted to play the Canucks, right? Like yeah, yeah, we were begging. I would have went you hometown. Yeah, you probably would. I wouldn't have went you though. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but no, and then the playoffs, and we ended up losing to Caledonia. But man, were they ever good? Oh. Yeah, no doubt. Okay, so Grex, your opinion? You know, people say the Go Jays Junior B hockey, whatever. But you got to compare those three leagues. Where's the Go J fit? And what's the best of those leagues of the CC, the OJ? Like, cause you have the experience in your opinion. Yeah. You know what? It, like a lot of people, a lot of people knock the junior B league down for some reason. And you know what? It's, it's the first two lines, even I would say the third line in junior B hockey could play in tier two. Like a lot of guys could, and a lot of guys have, right? A lot of guys have played in the OHL or tier two. The hockey's, you know, the hockey's just as good. I, I would probably say, the CCHL, I found when I was there, might have had a little bit more commitments. There might have been a little bit more, like, skill there. Um, the OJ was a little bit like younger kids, um, what I found anyways, like kids that had just maybe just gotten drafted or, like, some young Division One commits or kids that you know were probably going to commit. Mm-hmm. But even... Even in the in the in the GOJHL man, like there was there was some good hockey. Like Caledonia yeah. could have been in any of those leagues and been dominant in any of those leagues. Yeah, very right? good team. So, I mean, they also had the advantage of like having you know some finances on their side and stuff like uh, that. But I mean, you know what I always say about the GOJHL is like it's, it's weird as it is. It's where 
great players go go to die and and not that that sounds terrible but a lot of guys go to finish out their 20 year old year or whatever and have some fun and you know Absolutely. come back from the ohl and stuff right to their hometown or whatever because we it's it's a great local league the longest trip's what 45 minutes Top. yeah so yeah, i mean yeah. it, it's it's awesome and i think that's that rings true for almost every division i think the longest trip might be two hours like even in, including the midwest and out, out near like where leamington yeah. and all those are yeah. right yeah so, that's true there's tons of, of great hockey players that come from Southern Ontario. So when they come back from, from playing the Q or, or the O or wherever they are and, and they finish out their 20 year old years, they find a home often in these, in the Goje. And, and that's what keeps it, I think a, a really good league. Cause there are some good young kids developing and, and then, uh, you know, they go off and try, try it in, in junior A and, and, you know, they come home, um, which it's still a great league to play in. And I, we talk about it a lot on this podcast, but um, yeah, we appreciate the insight Grex for, with a guy with experience. No, absolutely. Like, I, I would never knock that league. I would never knock the GOJHL down at all because, you know what, there are some incredible players. And, and, you know, like, there's some incredible coaches in that league too. Like, you know, I never got to – I was never coached by your old man, but, like, <laughs> yeah. I heard some great stories about him. Oh, yeah. Um, but, like, some great coaches. Like, you're you're obviously around. The Paceros are around. Like, great coaches. So, yeah. you know, like, it, it's um, – it's if, if you, like – there's good young kids there too that you know maybe didn't couldn't crack their their OHL team right away or um, you know you even like you even still see kids getting Division One commitments from from the from the GOJHL as well and kids like using it as a stepping stool league but no it's a it's a great league like it's um, and and to be brutally honest like this isn't me like sounding like you know like cock or anything like that I was very surprised with how good it was when I did come and play so that's awesome well it's good to hear. Um, well, let's talk about your college experience a little bit, Grex. You know, like we That's talked to Nikki, uh, we had Nikki Passero on and, uh, you know, we know you guys played together and, uh, he also mentioned, let's talk about this for a second. You don't wear elbow pads. I, I knew this, but <laughs> let's talk, talk to the, the listeners about this a little bit. What's that all about, Grex? You know what? Like, I know it's crazy. Like I remember when, so when I was in, I was up in Fort Wayne, I had a trial in Fort Wayne and, uh, after I had gotten released, the co- the coaching staff said, "Hey, you gotta go. You gotta go check in with the equipment manager." And uh, he looked at me right away, and I was like, "Hey, you know, I'm, I'm I just got released, whatnot." And he goes, "You don't wear elbow pads." And I go, "No, I I don't." He's like, "That's crazy. Like that's that's <laughs> why." Yeah, right? but why like, though? You know what? It was just always a feel thing for me. Like yeah? I just did like the feel of elbow pads. I hated <laughs> the feel, and and this is gonna sound crazy too. Like I, when I would fall after a while, I just didn't feel it anymore. Oh, like, it's sense. nuts it's nuts at the first few times i'm not gonna lie i'm not superman it killed like it hurt like crazy but then after a while like you know it just i just got kind of used to it but i just i would rather sacrifice the feeling of like that, your elbows that elbow hurt, which is a terrible <laughs> feeling don't get me wrong than have them on like yeah. i just felt like in my mind my hands were so much better having them off fair so, enough respectable answer yeah fair yeah. enough so yeah, Greg. So as so we were talking about here, so we're jumping into we're jumping into college now. Okay, so so you played you played what? You played four years junior. Uh, I played no, I played three years junior. Three years junior because you played three years junior, yep. Grex. And uh, now you're, now uh, you committed to college right after after year twenty. Uh yeah, I can, it, right after actually I committed when I was in September. The school year had already started. Oh wow! Oh, so you committed like late, very late. To, I was r- right to Westfield. No, so what happened was oh, I was. When I aged out, I was going to the University of Guelph. Like, my dad and I, I got a call one day, and my dad and I went down um, for the head coach there, Sean Camp, who was a great guy, um, you know, wined and dined us. Like, we went out for, like, a nice steak dinner. I was like, this is where I'm going. Like, I was, like, so pumped up. Um, and then we had training camp. This would have been like, as soon as we got beat out. I think it would have been, like, March or April at yeah. the time. And so, like, my whole goal that summer was, like, I got to make Guelph, but you know cis not like cis is great hockey too like it's it's oh, come yeah. leaps and bounds um so when i went i went down there for um you know when training camp started um i walked in the locker room and we had an optional skate so i skated but then we came in had a team meeting and there was oh, like tons of faces in there like tons mm-hmm. of new faces and i'm like sitting there i'm thinking yeah i might start the year off as a sixth seventh defenseman that was my mindset in the summer but i hear all these kids oh yeah like um you know, I just transferred from, you know, Division One Merrimack. Or oh, wow. um, one, one kid had played um, in the American League in the East Coast year, League but had to sit out for, you know, uh, a semester. And then he was coming down. I'm like, 
oh man, now I found myself like lower and lower in the depth chart. I'm like, wow, like I, I don't know if I can do this. Yeah. So at that moment, something clicked in my head and I was like, if I want to play and I want to keep playing and give myself the best shot, I got to go somewhere else. And it, it was such a coincidence that on the drive home, you know, I was sitting talking with my old man, like we were driving home and I got the call from Westfield that day as we we're on the ride home. Wow. And I was like, Oh wow. It's a, it's September, maybe like third or fourth at this point. And, uh, he says to me, yeah, we got rolling admission. You know, you can apply at any time you can come in at any time and you wouldn't have to miss any games. So came home, you know, had all my stuff already packed. And I actually made the decision the next day in a shopper's drug mart, <laughs> like aisle with my sisters as they were like helping me pack up all my stuff and uh you know went away went right to westfield hadn't seen the school talked to the coach maybe once or twice but i was going no, was, was sam sorry sorry guys got there no, was no sammy worries. already there no the same situation he um he didn't know what he wanted to do either and he was getting recruited by westfield as well so i went down and he called me he's like do you like it and i was like yeah, <laughs> it's an awesome little new england town he's like all right i'm coming no way. And so he came as well. It was awesome. He was my roommate my freshman year. So you was- had you, Nikki Passero, and Big yeah. Sammy the Ball Q all kind yeah. of trenching around together in Westfield, eh? Oh, uh, absolutely. It was it was awesome. And Sammy, you guys know Sammy, like he is like the life of the party. Like like you want to be around Sammy, like Yeah. Um, He's a man. And, Pas- and Passero, like, you know, the the second we got into Westfield, he already got his tickets to uh Boston Red Sox game. We were going to watch Boston Red Sox. Like that's awesome. Yeah, so it was awesome. Yeah, man. What was that campus like down there, in in Westfield? You know what? It was it was super nice. It was. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be honest with you. I thought I was going to go down and it was going to be like, you know, some dump. But it was beautiful. Like pretty new buildings. Um, it was all on like one side of the street. Like it was on Western Avenue. I remember it was called right on the right hand side. Um, from one side, from one end of campus to the other, it was like five, 10 minute walk. So it wasn't far at all. And, you know, it was actually a beautiful campus. Like I, I can't say enough good things about the campus itself. That's great. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So we, so we dove in, so we dove, so we're diving into uh, your college right now a little bit. You, you played two years there. Three years there. Three years there. Wow, I'm off of my numbers tonight, Grex. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, I'm. Uh, you played three. And I should know this. You played. Anyways, you played three years there, Grex, and yeah. uh, you played you, just with your buddies. You had a great time. It looks like you lit it up out there. I know you lit it up out there. How did? How was that jump mentality wise for you from jumping around juniors a little bit, playing upper, playing high, to now going to like you're kind of like how did you feel making that jump to college now? Because it's two different, completely different games. I feel like. Uh, no, absolutely. Like it's it's a completely different game, and like Cars, I know you can relate. Like you, you went and played NCAA for a bit. It's yeah. it's crazy. Like the way I compare it to people that ask me, like our junior hockey, like is so skilled. There's so many good skaters, so many good players. Yeah, there, like NCAA, like even like we we were close to a lot of like Division One schools. Yeah, it was a lot of dump and grind, like dump and chase, and like yeah. very fast, very very fast but like a lot of dump and grind like, and um, that took a little bit of a like adjustment time because your time with the puck, it just, you know, it shrunk. It was, it was limited. Like, so when you got the puck, it was like, okay, I got to make a decision because somebody, somebody's coming like this to steamroll me. Well, I found that I was literally going to comment on that. I found uh, NCAA division three hockey was ruthless because guys are running around with with face shields on. No, honest to God, man, like Honestly, with cages, yeah. they're they're trying to rip your head off because they want to stay in the lineup. They want to do something where I think the NCAA has a responsibility to to fix that. And you don't see that kind of stuff happening in CIS hockey, you know, where they wear half shields. And and I really think the NCAA with the the amount of money they spend in other areas, spend it on insurance. For your guys, because that safety, like you'd have less concussions because you wouldn't have guys running around fearless with their face covered. I honestly couldn't agree more with you. I think, and and like you said, like there was so many kids on the roster, right? So me being sitting here and saying I didn't know what it was like to be out of the lineup, I didn't have to fight for my, you know, my position. Yeah. So I wasn't running around like that, right? Yeah. But for guys that you know found themselves on like the fifth even the we had nine freshmen dude or eight or nine exactly right how like if the coach wants you to play a certain role and that's the way that the game's going how do you not play like that because you want to stay in the lineup like we're all human i know dude honestly my junior career and stuff i maybe blocked four shots my entire (laughs) life and then i get to college and like 
my coach, like, I gotta block a shot every game or I'm, like, a pussy, you know what I mean? Like, and it's not that he's oh, called me that, but, like, sorry. and, dude, our one coach, too, he just, he was all about blocking shots, and, and this guy would come out, and he, he would block shots with his shins in practice just to show us, like, he was nuts, but he was an awesome guy, and it was crazy, but, uh, yeah, man, just total, totally different adjustment that way, right, where you, you go from being maybe a skill guy to have to accept a role. Except and exactly and like I, like I said I I I was privileged enough I want to say is the right word mm-hmm. that I didn't have to really worry about that, um, but you know I saw like my roommate right like he found himself like in and out of the lineup all the time and he knew the only way he was getting in the lineup was I you know I gotta I gotta you know make an impact I gotta go around I gotta hit people and um, so which you know I I can't fault guys for that because we're all hockey players we all want to do what it takes to stay in the lineup but yeah the blocking shots like that was a huge thing and and the crazy thing is i've never seen somebody and a team or like fans go like wild when somebody blocks a shot like they do in college hockey yeah really they love it and everybody's going crazy yeah eh? yeah i well honestly i think a lot of that comes from the response of the bench, right? Because the fans, and, and no disrespect to Americans, or, or, or but like a lot of the fans and, and you know American kids too, or, or fans like that go to these college games, they may not know the game that well, right? So their response is to what happens like on the ice, right? So they see the bench going nuts for a block shot, right? And then They're they just nuts. they just erupt, and it, which is great. Exactly. It's That's awesome. A, that is awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a more and organic like, response. Yeah, and those block shots, like those are. Like, it's huge. Like, you play, like, a 20 to 30 game season, like, blocking shots. Like, you know, you block a shot the wrong way, and, like, you know, you're out for a while. You could be out for a while. Season's over. Yeah, exactly. But guys do it because they want to stay in the lineup, and guys do it because you get so close to those guys that you play in school with, like, that they're brothers. And, like, those 20 to 30 games, not blocking that shot could be the two points that puts you in the playoffs or puts you out of the playoffs. Yeah, absolutely. So... Yeah, yeah, man. I mean, it, it does go a long way, right? And the, like, obviously, you start to appreciate the little stuff in college, right? Because the game gets oh, quicker yeah. and tighter, and and it's exactly. all those little things that make a big difference in uh, in the game. So, Grex, after college, you played uh, pro in Sweden. How was that? Yeah, so I uh, I finished um, my junior year. It was, and uh, I didn't know if I was going to go back for my senior year or I was I was done, and uh, I had graduated. So I had talked with the, the assistant coach who was an unbelievable guy. Like uh, I was so close to my three years there and he just said, you know what, maybe it's time for you to move on and play pro. And, um, and I ended up moving on to go play in uh, Fayetteville in the Southern professional hockey league. Still right, with um, no elbow pads. No elbow pads. I, <laughs> uh, I didn't even used to pack my elbow pads when I, when I would go to like to school in the, after the summer. So <laughs> I, I had no elbow pads. Um, I went down there and it was awesome. Like that, that jump was, was pretty big as well. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you're at Fayetteville, buddy. So you ended up having what, one year there? Yeah, but uh, about a half a year. Half a year. And then where'd you go from after that? So I got traded from Fayetteville to Pensacola in the same league. Um, but, uh, 13 games into my second year there in, in, um, in Fayetteville, I, I ended up getting traded, um, so that was a that was a that was a culture shock too. Like, I was so used to, you know, being in Fayetteville and um, had got protected by them over the summer, and I loved it. Like, I loved it there. I was so comfortable. And um, and then I ended up getting traded. I remember like, it was one of the most like dishearted. Like, getting traded. Like, I'm sorry. It's it's terrible. Like, you would just you build a camaraderie with all these guys and. Um, you know, I, I had my family coming down on a Friday and we had just finished a three and three. So we played in Roanoke on a Thursday. We played in Knoxville on the Friday and then uh, Saturday afternoon we played in Knoxville again and we got four to six points. But the Saturday, the Saturday we ended up losing like seven two at home. And, um, and the fans were, you could just tell like they were just so disinterested. Like they were like pissed off. Uh, but a three and three, like I gave myself a green light that night. I was like, ah, green light, like the boys are going out. Um, uh-huh. So yeah, like that was, uh, and then the next day, my family's coming down on the Friday. On the Wednesday, I end up getting traded to Pensacola. So, but how is how did you feel? How did you feel about that one? Because from uh, when I played in the Fed, uh, one of our uh, one of our um, 
our call up teams were uh, were was Pensacola, yeah. and you you got I heard some wicked stories from there, like uh, condos on the beach kind of thing, and and guys not guys getting called to the coast and not wanting to go just because like how how well they were treated. Is that true story, sir? You know what? It it is true. Like um, Pensacola was awesome. Like it was beautiful. Like uh, don't get me wrong, the living there was incredible. Like. Um, you know, even when my dad and my brother-in-law came down to visit me, like, they were like, this is incredible. Like, you're living right on the beach. The golf was awesome. Like, oh, yeah. Um, but it, it, you're right. It's kind of like the same thing. Like, guys come back to Pensacola when they're at the end of their career, kind of like they do in the GOJHL because yeah. you live on the beach. You still get to play pro hockey. And, yeah, it was it was awesome. Like, the living – like, I lived in a three-story house on the beach. That's like, unbelievable. A stone, a stone throw from the water. That's awesome. Yeah. Grex, what's the difference between the SPHL and Sweden? So when I was in the SPHL, um, it, it's a lot, like, it's just a lot more pro. Like, that's and that's the best way I can describe it. Like, mm-hmm. it's just more like, it's more systems, I would say. Whereas, like, when I went and played in Sweden, it was, like, a lot more open. Like, tons of skill over there too. yeah like, tell us about when you went over there a little bit greg so so you you played the sphl right and then you went to sweden so where'd you go in sweden where'd you play and then talk about the difference yeah absolutely yeah. so uh so when i went over i went over halfway through the year i went to sweden uh grassdorp so it's so it's about 45 minutes from gothenburg um small little town that's a like, great spot yeah the d2 yeah. pardon me d1 d2 uh d2 d2, d2 but we were promoting to play uh, Division One, so I think we I, I we played like a Division One team, and I think we we you know we spanked them pretty good. Like we were really good. We had guys when we were in the promotion like series. We had guys, a couple guys that dropped down from like Elsvenskan that kid came or were had played in the Elsvenskan, but had also played Division One and then came down because their seasons were over. Right um, so so we were incredible. Like the skill and the speed, like. It was incredible. Like, I went there, too, thinking, trying to have an open mind as best as possible, right? Yeah. Um, and it was fast. And and the thing you don't realize, too, like, people that haven't been over there, there is some good hockey players over there. Like, oh, there are yeah. some kids that could just don't want to come over to North America but could play, like, high-level North America. Um, so, again, the only difference I would say probably was, like, the professional level. Like, um playing in the Southern pro league, it was super professional, right? Like there were, you still get like a couple thousand fans a game, like, you know, the jumbotron, like all like the, you know, Jersey, like auctions after the games and stuff like that. Um, whereas in Sweden, it was more, it, it was, it was equally as fast. I'll say that like some of the kids out there could fly and the skill was incredible too. So that would, that would probably be the comparison I would say. Right on. Yeah. I have heard that too. You know, I think uh, like, over here, there's there's a little bit more resources in uh, in North America to to put on that like professional show, right? Where over Absolutely. there, you know, they're just less people. It's a smaller market. Yeah. So I mean, when you when you drop down those uh, third and fourth leagues, then that's kind of what happens. They're still great players because it's a hockey Absolutely. country, but uh, yeah, definitely the the professionalism drops for sure. But uh, that's that's cool. It's great to hear your insight with a guy you know with experience in, in both leagues. So. Now, Grex, let's, let's kind of dive dive a little deep into you, uh, why you kind of stopped playing. You got a concussion. Yeah. So um, last year, uh, I, I so after I went from Sweden, I came back. I had gotten the uh, actually Carson pursued hockey. Chris Sacco um, was representing me, and he got me a uh, a contract, a trial contract with the Fort Wayne Comets in the East Coast League. Um, and you know what? Like to get that East Coast League. Like, that's something you dream of. Like, when I was in the SP, I was like, I want to get called up to East Coast League so bad. Like, yeah. Um, and so then I got that tryout and I was all over it. I was like, I'm not going back to Europe. I'm taking this. I'm jumping on this. And um, so I went there and that was honestly incredible. But I ended up, you know, Fort Wayne is a double affiliate. So they're with um, Vegas and they're with LA. And uh, so I ended up getting released with guys like coming down, coming in and out. Um, and I went down to Evansville. And uh, first period of the uh, the my third game, I ended up getting uh, getting dinged pretty good, and um, it, it was a long road to recovery. Yeah, it still is, man. I, I, I yeah, I understand. Like, there, I understand that. I was, I've been out for I was out for three and a half years prior to coming yep. back, and and most guys don't. Most guys our age don't. 
And and a lot of guys, a lot of guys don't really. You said, I believe you said this to me, Carl. A lot of guys don't realize, like, yeah, like I got the tryout and I'm gonna go. I think I'm gonna go, but like deep down mentally, I don't have it. You know, I didn't, yeah. and I didn't have it for a bit. And then I now I, you know, I'm back. I'm right. I'm flying around now, but but uh, it's a tough goal, man. And I and I appreciate you coming out and telling our viewers how how your mentality is because because a lot of nobody understands that uh, how tough it is. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it's definitely people that haven't gone through it, it they can't understand it, right? No. So, you know, other people, too, that, that probably have experienced similar things, I think it's good to hear that, you know, there's other professionals and other guys that have been through this experience that, that share those feelings, right? Because that's part of what, you know, what we talked with Brady about, right? This yep. His Puck Supports Foundation and, and being able to talk to guys about mental health in hockey. Uh, it's something that is uh, heavily stigmatized. So that needs to change, right? And, and it's Absolutely. good to hear your experience again. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. That's been thanks for that, Carl. So now, so after all this, Carl, we're gonna dive back. You you joined one more team, I believe, and it was the Hitsman. And we're gonna bring Joey Bricks live here with it with the Hitsman right now. Joey Bricks, let's get your in depth uh, in depth uh, definition of the Hitsman right now. The Hitsman. Well, the Hitsman is uh, a new iteration of the Bigs and Barbarians. When I first started working for Hits FM, uh, the Bigs and Bar Show had a hockey team called the Bigs and Barbarians, and uh, I played on that team for about three years. Yep. Uh, and once they left, you know, someone had to take over the team. Well, I wanted to still have a team. I wanted to keep on doing it. It was awesome. You know, once a week, you get the boys out. You get to play hockey. You get the pizza and the beer, like Carl said. Of course, it goes to a great cause. After school matters. It's fantastic that uh, we get these teams coming out, raising a lot of money. And, uh, yeah, it's a great time. But, uh, anyway, back to the Bigs and Vibrarians. After that ended, I wanted to keep it going. So uh, I came, with the, came up with the name The Hitsman. I can't remember what else I had before that. It was, it was something stupid like the Hogs or <laughs> <laughs> something dumb. Good, good choice I, on the Hitsman. Eh? <laughs> I know I had a bunch of dumb names, but the Hitsman. Uh, we stopped on that one, and it's great. It's we got great jerseys, eh? We got sick oh, jerseys. Yeah. We got home and away too. Carson, yeah. you joined the boys for uh, for a tournament, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, for the uh, I did the Port only Colbert tournament. tournament. The only tournament I joined, Vito got an argument in the locker room with somebody. My own teammate. I can't remember what happened there, but guy didn't want to uh, win. I wanted to win. Guy didn't want to win. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. You know, got a little heated. I think I was uh, chirping around for something. Shouldn't it was sure. funny. It was funny. No, Vito just took it way too seriously. We we <laughs> did have the just a game. <laughs> oh, yeah, you know what? We were we were we were on the sh- going into this tournament. We were ready to win, Carl. We were we were we were scouted to win this tournament. No. Well, I, you know what? I didn't get to play in the tournament. I wasn't playing. Um, but I played a few games in the league with you guys. Um, so I played a few games while I was still in the IR with Evansville. I was trying to rehab a little bit, so I came out and played. And yeah, undercover. it was an un- unbelievable time. Like, just a great group of guys and a great cause. So I couldn't say no. And you couldn't say no to the pizzas and beers, huh? Uh, yeah, for sure. It's, it's just extra ice. That's the best part, eh? You get uh, yeah, that extra day sure. to go out and play some hockey, have some fun, yeah. get Absolutely. the legs moving. Yeah, we had a tough, we had a tough, tough way. We didn't get to play this year, eh, Joey? Yeah, that really sucks. Uh, right when we were gearing up for the uh, the second season of the Hitsman, you know, all that stuff happened in the world, yeah. and <laughs> everything <laughs> got shut down. Yeah, yeah. you know it is. It, it is. It is. We had it, it happened, but. Uh, no, man. No, You're jo- coming back, though. You're coming back. Yeah, the Hitsmans will, will uh, come back uh, once uh, arena start opening back up and we can uh, use the showers. That's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> big, shower, big shower, guys. Big shower, guys. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, all in all, it's uh, that's a great team, Carl. We're glad to have you at all times there. And uh, hope you have fun, Carson. We're going to bring you up to a few games this year now. And uh, oh, yeah. now that you're That'd part of the boys. Yeah. But uh, the Hitsman's a great cause, guys. Uh, a lot of great causes mm-hmm. we're starting to follow now. Just remember to follow our boy, uh, Brady Leavold at Puck Support at, uh, at Mental Health uh, Hockey and uh, Hockey to Hell and Back podcast. Uh, great guy, and uh, th- that's all we're about here. You know what I mean? Carson, you got something to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah Greg. So honestly, we like to, uh, we're getting uh, kind of on the, on the long of it here. So um, honestly, we like to finish on a lighter side. And we talked that's to it. Nikki last time about your experience living together. You know, yeah. we gotta, you gotta have some good stories from college. Some, some funny stuff had to have happened. Let's, uh, let's hear one of those. Yeah, absolutely. Nikki, Nikki got the nickname the Mayor from from everybody on, in, on the hockey team and in the in the in the community there. He he would step on campus and know every single person. Like, yeah, I'm not even kidding you. <laughs> he would know everybody. Um, much like he does li- here. Yeah, standard. Yeah, just like he does here, exactly. Like he's, <laughs> he's the mayor of Fort Erie still. Yeah. Um, until this day, we still call him the mayor. But he would, he was awesome, Nikki. Like he just made things like so much better. Like you guys know, like 
he always had his foot in something. Um, <laughs> his recliner, he used to have this recliner right by the door. And uh, he would have the la- uh, the the big screen on watching an NHL game. He'd have the, re- the, the laptop resting on his stomach watching the Meteors game. And then he'd have his phone checking the scores. Like the guy <laughs> just lived and breathed hockey. Hockey like, guy, he, eh? He just loved it so much. But he, you know, he kept our house in check all the time. Like uh, our other roommate, Johnny, like we just we had so much fun like those two years that we lived together were were honestly incredible but i don't have enough good things to say about nikki like just a good person and you know like uh, they're doing great things there in fort erie too so mm-hmm. it's awesome to see that he's been able to give back and you you guys know nick like you know incredible shot but um he, you know he was just he was always meant to be a coach like he's just knows the game almost better than anyone i know uh, he's one of the smartest hockey minds i've ever met yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Grex, moving forward here now in hockey, I know you plan to give back. We've talked about it a little bit. You want to do some uh, some consulting work, maybe with pursuit and some uh, development, skill development. I know you're a great hockey player and you're you're a great uh, you know teacher of the game. So, um, how do you plan to to you know get involved in hockey if you if you plan to stay involved? Yeah, absolutely. Actually, this year I was I was actually going to go back and play in Finland. Oh wow! Um, yeah, something lined up in Finland, and then. Um, you know, I was I was kind of ready to go. I t- the 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 coach was actually my first ever pro coach. He's he just signed a two year extension. Great guy, and he wanted me to go down. And then I got uh, I got locked in with a girlfriend, <laughs> and, uh, and I kind of kind of kiboshed things. So no, but I know it's just with COVID going on. It just it wasn't. Uh, I didn't think it was the year to go. Like hopping on a plane and whatnot. Hey, do you but, love her? Uh, what a question! Eh? <laughs> 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 what a question! Top uh, one, eh? Right on the spot. Yeah. Hey, for another time, for another time. For another time. No, but, <laughs> yeah, I would love to give back, like, any way I can. Like, we've been so, like, like, like all of us, anybody that was able to play hockey, you're privileged, right? Like, we were all privileged. We, our parents gave us the, the best chance at um, at playing. And, uh, and, you know, like, I, I have them to thank. So I, I want to keep giving back in the best way possible. Man, that's Absolutely. that's great, dude. Like, I, I'm pumped for you too, man. Cause, uh, cause Pursuit's got something huge going here, and they can and to add you to their crew, dude, is just uh, is exceptional, and uh, it's gonna be great both ways for both you guys. Greg, so I want to give, uh, cause it, it looks like we're wrapping up here. I want to give one parting word before I get out of here. I want to let you know something, Greg. You're talking about giving back. Yeah. You know what? You're all about that when you're on the ice. I play with a lot of high caliber guys. I I do. I play with a lot of guys that are better than me. Let's be fucking honest. And all of those guys, when I play with you on the ice, there's something about you, man, that like you almost like transfer your hockey energy out there on the ice. You make everyone else on the line play better. You're out there passing the puck. You're in the right spot. You know, on the bench, you're uh, you're very positive. You know, just pumping the team up, saying some notes here and there, and uh, I just want to let you know I appreciate that. You make everyone better. Well, well, Br- Brixie, I really appreciate that, buddy. Those those mean a lot coming from you and someone that I always made sure when I was on my line when I was playing up center for uh, the Hitsmen. So yeah, that means a lot coming from you. Hey, Greg, just make sure make sure you keep your head up behind the net so I don't gotta chase anybody around anymore for you, all yeah, right, buddy? Yeah, that could that could definitely be a story for a different time. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna bring yeah. Greco on one more time. Oh yeah, there you go. Absolutely, have it. Uh, Greco. It was great having you, man. You know, I appreciate you, dude. I, uh, I say hi to your family for me. They're great. I wish your sister the best of luck with uh, with uh, with her future child. Greco's, Thank you. Mr. Carl's going to be Uncle Carl. There you Uncle go. Carl exactly. soon. Congrats. Yeah, I appreciate that, boys. Thank you so right, much. So, hey, we'll give, we'll give Carl me. a little salute here. Yeah, thanks Greco. a lot, Grex. Cheers, appreciate Greco. It. Cheers, Greco. Thank you, boys. Thank you for having me. Uh, right, is it a glass of red wine? That's a glass of red wine. That's awesome. Oh, have a good yeah. night, Carl. Cheers, That's buddy. Good. Have a good night, See you, buddy. All right, thanks, guys. Honestly, really appreciate uh, everybody joining us and all the support we've had. Over 500 downloads now. Um, you know, appreciate the support. We started this kind of on a whim, but uh, keep checking us out. You know, we're on uh, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts. We uh, post up on YouTube every Thursday and Sunday. So, uh, you know, keep supporting us. We appreciate it, like I said. And uh, thanks for listening in. You know, Carl was on tonight. Uh, he's got some great insight. Uh, played in a lot of different leagues and, and even experienced the college life and, and living in Europe a bit. So he's got some some cool things that we talked about. And, uh, you know, like I said, uh, thanks for listening. And, uh, and as always, here at GM32, we've got one question for you. Can you feel it now? Would you take-